hopefully we get a major win this tournament, you know, at Big House. Perhaps the most stacked tournament of all time. My potential is way higher than this. And for the first time ever. Good games, dude. What's that? My name is uh, Jeff, Jeffrey Williamson's my full name, and my gamer tag is Axe. I started competitively in 2006. There was an advertisement for a tournament in my high school held by Vectorman. I didn't know him at the time, but now he's my roommate. He held a tournament back then at my high school. We went to the same one, and I went to that tournament, got destroyed, and I was like, I want to do better. So I looked up some techniques on like the old school YouTube that was barely starting out. And I found some crazy, I saw people wave dashing and stuff that it was sped up, but that's when it all started in, in 2006. And that one tournament is what got me into it. I think when I was starting out Melee and I learned the advanced text and stuff, I practiced it all with Pikachu at first, but I ventured out to like the rest of the characters. I like just using a ton of characters and seeing what they all can do. I mean, I like the whole game really. And I think when you have fun with it and you learn a whole bunch of intricate stuff that I guess might not be optimal, people are like, why would you even want to know something like this? But when you learn a whole bunch of things about Melee that are, I guess, useless, a lot of other people would see it as useless, you start seeing the game a different way. And I I think because of that, I have some sort of knack for Pikachu's play style. Like I just really vibe with it. But I think if more people did some more exploring with the game itself and things that people don't normally mess with, I think maybe we would see a lot more lower mid tiers rise up. Yeah, ever, ever since I started in 06 and went to that tournament, then learn advanced techniques, I'm like, I wanna win the next one. Cause I knew there was gonna be a one after that. So I practiced, went to the next one. And I was like, man, this is really fun. And I just wanted to go to a lot more tournaments, started researching more and it just never stopped. Like I just always wanted to go to tournaments after that. It kind of became my hobby. Oh my god! Oh my god, that was almost it, but it wasn't! It's a miss! Right the yes! Oh my god! Deflection! That was emphatic! That was amazing! Oh, is he gonna survive? He is! And That's get it! it. Ooh, this is bad! Oh. Champion! X did it! He's done it! A Pikachu has won a major Smash Summit 8! I would really like to prove that Summit wasn't just some fluke an anomaly or something like that. I don't want this to be just the one tournament that I win. I want to do more, right? And I didn't really get much of a chance to do that. And I really want to see if I can push myself to the next level and win those majors because I see everyone else playing the top players uh, currently right now. Like I see all the top 10 players and I'm like, I think that if I can play the way that I know that I can, I can beat all these people. I could just see that they're all beatable and I really wanna do it. <laughs> I really want to and I think that I can, so I'm going for it. This event, this is a bit different. Usually what I do to prepare is go home after an event, look up my footage from the previous event, you know, go over my matches, say what can I do different, and just practice a lot at home to patch those holes, come up with new things, and go to the next one with all that new information. But this time, this past week, I took a break, and 
I think a break can do me some good, but uh, yeah, I, I sort of took a break. I actually spent the last week with my mom. I just competed last weekend at LCC. So leading up to this event, I kind of just like took a step back. I did watch some footage, but mostly I just took a step back and I'm like, I'm just gonna relax this time and then come here with more of a relaxed state, like more chill. And I wanna see how that affects me. This weekend, I want to feel good about my gameplay. And even if I get like 33rd place or anything lower, if I feel good about my gameplay, I feel satisfied. Uh, but at this point, I feel like if I do play the way that I want to, I would think that I should be getting at least somewhere in top eight. That's what I think. So I don't think I'll be satisfied unless that were to happen. Hi. So yes, we're, we're access. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> so you got a little ways to go. Okay. Um, you have Vi, obviously. Okay, cool. Next up, the person is also in doubles. Okay. So it might take a little while. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. Round one pools. I don't remember. <laughs> I came into the matches pretty tired. I was still playing like okay, kind of shaky. Dude, I'm <laughs> I, I'm gonna fall asleep. <laughs> I'm like tired. So I did a match or two. I had a stream match and I was waiting for that stream match to happen, but then I waited like at least an hour, maybe longer. I don't know, like the, he said, the TO just asked if I've seen him and I'm like, no, I haven't seen him. And afterwards they just told us like, hey, just go play off stream. I heard, I heard the news. <laughs> so, so we played off stream and, um, and I remember winning, but I don't, I don't remember a lot of it, I'm not gonna lie. Like, round one's kind of a blur to me. Thanks for letting me combo you a little bit. Good stuff, good stuff. <laughs> yeah. the rest. Good play, thank you, dude. Good luck to you, too. Okay, now I do remember round two pools. How are you doing? Hey, not too bad. How about yourself? Good. Good, 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 good. good. At that time, I was still pretty tired, and I was just like, okay, these matches are gonna be harder. I know that once you hit round two, the difficulty level just spikes really hard. All right, good luck. So I had Firefly High first, and I'm like, I really need to get myself together. I gotta play better. I was still pretty shaky, I think just because I was so tired. Firefly High was a lot better than I was expecting them to be. I, I had no idea what that skill level would be, but they were good, a fantastic Fox player. I ended up winning that 2-0. Uh, I remember it going down to last stock, but I still won. Hey, good games, dude. That was fun. <laughs> yeah. But I felt okay about that one, and that was also a good warm-up going into my next match, which was Curve. Now, Curve was the hard one. Hey, what's up, dude? Hey. Curve is a Fox player, formerly a Luigi, but he switched to Fox. Very good. He's been on the rise and everything. And uh, I knew it was going to be hard. I faced him before. I've actually played him a decent amount on net play. We always run into each other in unranked. All right, good luck. It seems like he plays the same in friendlies as he does in tournament. That's what it felt like anyway. And I think that helped me. Me, on the other hand, I played way more defensive than I would in online play. I um, sat back a lot. Game one, I had the lead the whole time, but then he came back. Oh man, that hurt, that hurt, because he made some crazy comeback, and I was just like, dang, like he won game one, he did a, like a pop-off, and I'm like, oh man. Okay, I gotta pull myself together. The, the game still felt okay. I felt like I could do it. So I just stayed strong and I was able to win all three games after that. I was so relieved after winning, honestly. I was just like, because I was tired. I felt like I wasn't playing all that well. Let's go. Let's go. Thanks, dude. I'm so glad. I actually played okay, even though I was really tired, but I was still definitely sluggish. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. But I was just really happy to get through that day one. That was tough. It was really hard. Top 64, right? Yeah, yeah, top 64. That was it. And, and that little pop-off that I did after winning, like, yes, that was like a, I'm so glad I got through the day. I was happy to beat Curve, but the pop-off specifically was just like, yes, 
the day is done. I did it. I made it to top 64 winners. I was just happy about my placement at that time. Yeah, I'm actually so happy right now. Oh my gosh. After my match was done, I finished at maybe around 7 p.m. or so. The TO told me, okay, you have your next match tomorrow. It's going to be at 8 p.m. It's Saturday, tomorrow at 8. You will be talking 8 p.m.? That's what my paper says. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Okay, <laughs> thank you. You got a lot of time to practice. Dude, I don't play till 8 p.m.? What am I going to do with my life? I'm like, it, my next match isn't until like 25 hours from now. Like, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> so I waited 25 hours for the next match. Okay, so not too bad. That's good. Wow, it is, it is packed right now. Saturday, I woke up. I slept for a very long time. I don't, I must have slept like 10 hours. I went to the venue later on and I just started warming up. When I warm up, I like using different characters usually. I like using Falco the most because to me, he feels the most melee character. Like I'll play melee and I'm just like, this character right here just encapsulates everything about the game, that's how I feel. And I always feel that if I can move well with Falco and do everything that I want to do, I'll also do well with Pikachu. Like just warming up with different characters because warming up with Pikachu, I feel like it doesn't give me everything in the game like Spazies do. I like Fox too, but Fox is like a little uncomfortably fast. So I slow it down a bit with Falco to warm up with, but if I warm up with Falco and I'm feeling good, I feel like I can play any character, including Pikachu, at my highest potential. Besides being really cold, I did uh, feel good. I felt physically good, like my mind was sharp. I had a ton of sleep. Yeah, but okay, yeah, I'm, I'm ready, so. Okay, cool. And I think that really came in handy for this tournament versus Lucky, but I still did pretty well. That's how I felt. Right before I played Lucky, I did look at our most recent set, which was at Shine. I watched a little bit of it on my phone just to take a, a few mental notes. I'm like, okay, this happened last time. Just remember a couple of things, nothing too crazy. I felt good. I felt good the whole day. The only problem is that I was cold. <laughs> Much colder on day two for some reason. Day one was like kind of cold, but it was manageable. Day two was freezing. I don't know what it was. Like they just pumped the AC or something. So we've got Lucky and Axe, man. <laughs> I, can you believe Lucky and Axe? I'm just kidding. Is, I... is winners top 24. What's up, dude? How you doing, man? Good, man, Sean. Good, good, good. Same old, same old. Yeah, same here. So something weird happens when I'm cold and I get nervous. I felt nervous. Uh, and that just like makes me feel even more cold. I guess because when I'm nervous, I start like shaking a bit, but then the cold makes me shake even more. So I was just shaky physically. It is freezing in here. And so you'll see- It's Axe, very cold. Yeah, the, the Arizona native truly bundled up because it is, it is chilly. And uh, that was uh, tough. Like, like when you're nervous and cold, I guess you just, it just amplifies it. Okay. But I did know that I was moving pretty decently well. I felt good about my play. And the nerves started going down and down as I was playing Lucky. Uh, uh, we did Battlefield. Okay. All right, good luck, dude. These guys, too, have also been playing each other for over a decade. Game one versus Lucky, I four-stocked him. <laughs> how did that happen? I have no idea how that happened. The, uh, they've been handling for a while, but to make sure that they stay it's truly on top of the rough start. Just pick it down. Do this, right? Gets the chip yes, down. Yes, yes. He's like not trying to get cute with an axe by the ledge. Yes. He's like, oh. Oh my God. Tried and true. Yeah. Right there. Oh my goodness. But right now, it doesn't matter. You know, I played that game one, I was just moving, and then as the first stock happened, and then the second stock, I was just like, you know what, this is okay. 
and I just started getting less nervous. In turn, I started feeling a little less cold. I was still cold, but it was less so. I just felt better and better as the set went on. Game two, he was fighting a lot harder and it was way more difficult. I think he just plays better with more space. He went to dreamland for like, you know, really big stage and I felt like he did a lot better when he took his time. And so that was a lot harder. Like during the rest of the set with Lucky, I just felt somewhat calm and confident about my play. And he ended up winning game three. But even after that, I was like, stay focused. You can do this. Like, just keep playing the way that you are because I felt like it was good. So I just kept doing that. Yeah. Oh. 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 <laughs> that was a very fitting lucky end. Now I do remember at the very end, he had an unfortunate SD kind of, like he fell off stage on his last stock. I was like, man, I feel bad about this. I don't know if I should like edge guard him or not. I just feel like I, I want to do a homie stock or something, but this is big house. Like I know that I shouldn't and I know Vector man back at home is going to be yelling at me if I don't edge guard him here and then he ends up winning the game and I'm like all right I guess I guess I'm going to edge guard him so I edge guarded him last talk and I just kind of shook my head because I didn't feel good about doing that and then when I went up to fist bump lucky I was just like I'm sorry man and he said I hate that character <laughs> uh, sorry dude it's GG's <clears throat> I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay. I knew that I was projected to play Mango, so I had a good feeling I'd be playing Mango afterwards, but when I was about to, when I finished my set with Lucky, and they were just like, okay, you, you're you probably gonna have to fight Mango. One of the TOs came up and they're just like, hey, Mango and Tuesday are game five right now. Mango and Tuesday are game five right now. Oh, just off stream somewhere? Yeah. Oh shit, let's go two. <laughs> my go? <laughs> I mean, Jack, if you wanna watch, I'm coming with you. Yeah, I wanna watch. <laughs> I was like, what? Like, they're game five? Like, two Saiyan? I might have to fight two Saiyan of all people? We tried to find them. We couldn't find them anywhere. I, I guess Mango ended up winning that. But apparently, it was extremely close from what I heard. But yeah, I did know that I, would, I was projected to play Mango, so I was thinking that's what would happen. Mango's very different of a player. He plays kind of like a feels type of thing, super adaptive. It seems like he never really has a game plan whenever I fight him. He kind of just fights on instinct. He's like a wild animal, right? And I really vibe with that. Like, I, I like that he plays with that kind of style. And me going into it, this kind of happens every time I play Mango. I'm just kind of like, I don't really like to have like a, a certain game plan where I'm just like, okay, make sure to do exactly this, follow this game plan. Because every time I've tried that, he adapts very quickly and then it never works regardless. So I think versus him, I normally do a lot better if I'm just like, okay, free form, just go into it. Like you're playing friendlies and just run wild. Like just do your thing. The last time I played Mango was Smash Con. Man. <laughs> That time he went Falco on game five. I felt like that was interesting. Like he'll just switch to Falco sometimes. Wait, he's going Falco? What, uh, in game five? Huh? Are you out of your mind? What? He would go Fox during most of the set. It's, it's like this whole crazy, I never really know what's gonna happen with him. But we usually have good matches. And that went down to the wire. That was game five last stock. Against all Deep odds, the Tetsons! Mango just barely scraping by on that. It looked like Axe was going to bring it all the way back. It's going to be really fun to watch Mango play Axe right after we watch Lucky play Axe. Hey, good luck, man.
That's it. Yeah. Get the shield poke bear. Just the poke. That was tight. Vertical. This should be a stock. Up smash and kill here. Oh, and he lost the jump. Oh, but he's coming back. Oh, what a swing. What? But now Mango gets to go back to Fox. Going to game three, one, one. Approaching drills, it's just such a good way for Mango to find the open. That, that was cool. But I think that's gonna that's do it. it. Yeah, that was a sick counter by Axe. Wow. And that's it. Wow, right? oh, three there. stocks by Mango. Very nicely Damn. done. Go! Mango going back to Fox, it just feels so much more at home. Barely living. And that oh, one will definitely oh. do it. That was so sick. Look at that! The man is a genius! Oh, and that's another one, one. yep. He didn't do well that period, but if you were to put Matt, geez. yo, and that's it. That's it. That's it. Very Mango well winners quarters. Hey, good games, dude. Good set. Very homies. They know. They they know. I mean, yeah. if one of them was playing slightly off, yeah. the recognition is there. I do know that I could do a lot better versus him, so uh, that was disappointing. But uh, I felt it was. It was okay. I felt like I learned a lot. Game one was very close. I feel like I could have taken it, but he ended up edging me out there. Game two, he switched to Falco on FD, actually, which I didn't expect. I thought he would stay Fox on FD, but he went Falco, and I'm like, okay, that's you know, that's, that's a very feels-based player type of thing to do, but I guess I'm kind of prepared for it. Like, I kind of know he might be doing those sorts of things, like just playing by feel, but I was able to win on FD thanks to chain grabs. And then games three and four, he just, I don't know, like he turned on the Jets, he started playing a lot better, and me, I felt a bit lost. I don't know what it was, I just started feeling, uh, I started doubting a lot of my play. Like he would win an interaction and I'm just like, he shouldn't have won that interaction. And then it just kind of got to me and then I started making a lot of mistakes. Everything just went downhill the further the set went on and I, I was very disappointed about that. You know, I, I, that does happen to me here and there. I was. Bit disappointed that happened right there but we usually have good matches and this was probably the worst one that we've had in quite a while usually they kind of go down to the wire like i played them at genesis played them at smash con they're all like usually close down to the wire but this one everything just fell apart to me so i'm going to try everything to make sure that doesn't happen again i'll do much better next time i have to play him overall i am glad that i learned a lot at least like i feel like i sort of win if i gather a lot of information if I didn't learn anything from the set, that would be way more disappointing. So, um, I felt okay about it. If I lost, I'd say fuck you. <laughs> you're, better, you're better sport than I am. <laughs> no, don't, don't, no, don't get me wrong, I'm salty. I, I just, I'm just holding it, man. Like, what can I say? You're good <laughs> this is the hardest part about having the 8 p.m. pool and then having 11 a.m. the next day. Wait, are you done playing? Yeah. And I dude, like I, I, I hate that. Yeah, it's I hate, I'm so I'm like, oh, you, they are just like, oh, you play tomorrow, and I'm like, but I'm salty, dude. I want to like win my way into it. It's like good energy. Ah. <laughs> if it's like you're playing bad, you can be like, okay. Yeah, yeah that's true. That's probably, true. I'm like, let's go. I want to be out of the tournament, and I'm trying. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But if you play bad, you probably don't even make it to top 24. You know. Tomorrow's 11 a.m. Ideally, I want to warm up for at least three hours before top 24, which means I need to be up at like 7 a.m. 7 a.m., get ready and stuff, come here to the venue, uh, warm up from uh, 8 to 11, and then do my matches. So that's, that's the plan. All good. All right, thank you. 
I got up a bit late, you know, I didn't get up as early as I wanted to, but I felt good. I felt rejuvenated, came to the venue, uh, warmed up some, and I, I felt good. Like, I felt good about my play and everything. When I got up that morning, that's when I checked to see who I played, because uh, before that I had no idea. It just helps me to sleep, be less anxious. But I got up, checked the bracket, saw I have none, and I'm just like, okay, I got none. Like, honestly, that's one of the best draws I could have gotten, seeing everyone else in top 24. I'm like, everyone's such a killer here. Uh, having none is actually probably one of my, one of the best matchups I could get, but all of them would be really hard. And none beat me last time we played at Pound. But yeah, he ended up beating me there. He beat me 3-1, so. I guess it just goes to show like how insane the top 24 was of this event. I've been making a lot of a lot of improvements on my play, and I did think that I stood a much better chance versus none this time, as opposed to last time. So I felt okay. I felt like I could do it. I think that I can win this, but we're gonna see. You know, none's crazy, and seeing as he won last time, I have to give him a ton of respect. So I'm gonna try my hardest, and we'll see how it goes. But I felt okay about it going into it. All right, back. This time I didn't have it. Um, you're both good to go with our volunteer here. Uh, you're going to go to station 116 if you take them over there. Thank you. What's up, dude? Hey. I think we got to follow him, yeah. <laughs> Going into none, uh, I was still nervous, you know. I know he's an amazing player. And uh, I just felt like, you know what, whatever happens, happens. I'm just going to go in and see what I can do. You know, I don't want to think about it too much because it psychs myself out. It, it psychs me out. I just want to um, try to be as calm as I can be and just let the gameplay do the talking. All right, good luck, dude. We were clashing like crazy, it was insane. I ended up clutching out some games which were very crucial in the set and I was able to win, I believe I won the first two matches. Game three, he ends up beating me like somewhat solidly and then I go to FD, you know, the, the strongest stage in the matchup and he ended up beating me on FD. It was very close, down to the wire and 
he ended up beating me on FD. And I'm like, oh my gosh, he just beat me on my hardest counter pick. And I started questioning myself, you know, that's when I started getting nervous. And I'm like, oh man, I don't know if I should even go FD again, because he just seemed really good there. And I had to talk myself into it, be like, no, this is your hardest, like your strongest counter pick. You just have to be more careful. You can do it. Uh, take away what you did right in the last game and just do that a lot more. And just be careful. And so I went into game five with that kind of mindset. All right, yeah, I'll go back. Okay. And I was able to clutch out the set. I did feel, I felt a little bit bad for some reason. I beat him and I'm just like, it might be because I love Nun so much. You know, he's one of my favorite players, maybe my favorite right now. I don't know, I felt a bit bad. I feel like I, I it's because I chain grabbed him for the victory. I think that was it. I'm like, man, I kind of lamed him out on the last game and I, I don't feel good about that. But it, it always feels like that when I win on FD. But it is what it is. And I ended up winning. I was happy to move on in the bracket. It also helps that I had some homies there behind me. Hearing them cheer me on and like, be really encouraging, it helps me a ton whenever that happens. Oh, oh. Make it interesting. oh my gosh. <laughs> Thanks for cheering for me, you guys. That was, that was tough. I actually wanted to play Leffen instead of Moki because I felt that Moki was going to be a lot more difficult than Leffen, actually. Leffen, Moki? I have to fight the winner of that. Yeah, Leffen, Moki? Yeah. up again? <laughs> With Leffen, I feel like if I'm not playing super hot, he kind of just runs all over me. But when I'm playing well, and I felt like I was playing pretty well today, I feel like I could kind of handle him. A lot of it is he punishes my mistakes very hard, but I felt like I could do better versus him this time. Although I low-key think Leffen would be easier for me. Moki, on the other hand, uh, he plays a lot versus Swift. He's very, very good at the Pikachu matchup, and I knew that would be very hard no matter what. Uh, it's just Moki grinds with Swift. He's, he does, yeah. I personally felt like Moki would be the harder opponent, uh, but I was just watching, just kind of eager to see who was gonna win. Like, either way, it was gonna be very difficult. Oh! How's he gonna get around this? Reaching maybe a little bit with that drill. Some near trades. Oh my gosh, they both land in shield. Neither of them willing to take a risk. Oh, this is it! And Moki! Oh! The drill steals it! Stage. Oh my god, what a finisher! I know he really wanted to beat Leffen, so I thought there was a, a good shot that it might happen, and it did, which is crazy. Like, man, Moki was on fire today. Insane. I knew Moki was gonna be very difficult. I played him at SmashCon. That went game five last stock down to the wire. I felt that I played very well at SmashCon versus him and it still went down to the absolute last hit. And I was just thinking like, I need to play that well or better if I want a shot at beating him. And I did feel pretty good today. The only problem was it's cold again. So I felt pretty cold, but I did feel pretty good and confident about my play. I go up right now, right? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And I just felt like, you know what? Whatever happens, happens. And I'm just gonna jump in and just do it. You know, that's how I felt most of the day. Like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna jump in and do it and see what happens. Uh, if I win, I'm gonna be very happy. If I lose, it's all right. You know, like it, it is what it is. I just wanna try my best and be happy about my own gameplay. Uh, are we doing Battlefield? Or you want to Okay, cool, cool. Let me just uh, warm up for yeah. We like that percent. It does give you superpowers. Oh, wow. wow. I love that call out. Gotta let him know one time. Feels like Axe is a king of finding your little mistakes and just turning them into stocks. That's it. 
Yep. The full punish. He runs it down and gets the up air. Oh, Moki! Has been three stocks in a row. Oh my oh, god! Oh, but that was no. it! I thought for sure. Oh, oh that's that it! Wow, that was crazy. The Moki almost brought that all the way back. Ready? We're going to yeah. Pokemon Go. Stadium. Oh, goes wow. out there. Caught him still holding out. Oh, oh the, great so nice. only possible on the grass stage. That's right. Down tilt, that's going to do it. Is that it? That is it. He is just connecting on these upper uppers. 2-1, Mokus. the shine stall. We've seen Moki doing a lot of that. <gasps> oh, damn. What? Got him. Hey, wow, yeah, gets it. Last stock of the tournament? Go. Question mark? That helps. <laughs> that was uh, what we like to call in the biz not invincible. <laughs> That's correct. Just got jabbed a little bit. Not, not even intangible. Yeah. Even, you know. Oh, playing around this top platform. So tricky. Yep. Wow, that oh. platform height. Perfect. That actually helped him out oh. so much. Oh. What a shot stall. It. Wow. Axe with a crucial error. Are you kidding me? For most foxes, that is a foregone conclusion. But Moki is still here. It's still fighting. Axe gets the ledge. Oh, again. Trying to be slippy around these platforms. Oh, the phantom, phantom down, down tilt. tilt. That knocks down Fendi. And oh, my goodness. The shine. Such a tough oh, spot. Oh, he calls it, it out. Wow. Hey, good matches, dude. Good matches. Game one versus Moki, I go in uh, to the set. I felt pretty calm, pretty normal. I was cold, but nothing too crazy. I was all right. And I felt okay about my play going into it. Uh, but game one, you know, as soon as the first stock and even the second stock, as that was happening, I was like, man, this is really hard. He was playing even better than he was at SmashCon, I would say. It was going to be a hard set the way that he's just moving right now. Like he's just, everything's on point. He's being very careful, patient, and then very explosive with his combo game. Like everything was just, seemed flawless. And I'm like, man, this is gonna be really hard. But I still felt confident. Like I felt like I could do it. I just have to switch up a few things. Game one, I just fought as hard as I could, got as much information as I could. With this information, I need to take this and try to win the rest of the set. So sometimes I pick Fountain of Dreams, before I pick FD. Those are usually my two kind of fixations, Fountain of Dreams and FD. Sometimes I'll go Fountain of Dreams instead of FD. Whenever I do that, it's because I don't feel like I have a handle on the way that they like to play. And I don't feel good about getting grabs on FD. But this time, after game one, I was like, I think I learned a lot and I think I got this. And so I just went FD and I felt good about getting grabs. It was still close, but I was able to win on FD. And then uh, his counter pick Stadium, that's just a hard counter pick. It was hard for me to do much there. I tried my hardest to win, but he got me. Game four was just, man, going to Fountain of Dreams, my hardest counter pick besides FD. I feel like I should always win that one. That's how I felt, but it was tough. Like he was playing crazy and it went down to the wire. And there were a couple of times where I felt like I had some edge guards and I'm like, okay, I got him here as long as I execute this, but the nerves started hitting me some. And I would just 
mess up here and there. I was just starting to make a lot of mistakes on game four. Like it was just kind of hitting me. And those nerves, man, like I, I couldn't really pull myself together. Like I couldn't stop getting nervous. And so I started flubbing some, but I tried my hardest to keep myself together. But then it, it goes down to the wire. I get him off stage and it's an edge guard I should normally hit. He was very tricky with his recovery, by the way, but I should still hit it regardless, but I missed. I was like, oh man. So then we play the neutral game and I go for an approaching down tilt, but then it phantom hits. And I was like, no, dude. And then I don't know, like thinking about everything that was going wrong, I, I just started getting a bit, I guess, flustered. I started getting a bit like panicky. And then he ended up coming back and winning that game. And I was like, oh my gosh, I just feel like, I felt like I got unlucky with with like several things that went on that game, but like it happens, right? Like I, I um, wish it went a different way. And I feel like I could have easily won that game, um, but sometimes things just don't go your way, right? And after I lost, I was kind of just telling myself that like, you know what, it, it happens, it's okay. So after that set happened, I went backstage and Moki was up next to me, like gathering his things and stuff. And I told him, I was just like, hey, those were good games. And uh, it was it was really fun playing you and stuff. And he was just like, yeah, I feel like we always have good sets. It's always fun. And I told him, bro, I'm salty. <laughs> that was well played, man. Uh, well, honestly, it was fun. So like, I feel like we have really good sets. Yeah, our sets are pretty nice. I'm also salty as hell. <laughs> I'm just trying to like, hold it, you know? Yeah, who do you play next? I play h -Bug. All right, get it, dude. Thank you. Hope you win. Good luck, man. I want to get the run back sometime, and he's, and, you know, he just laughed. I told him good luck on his next run, and like, you know, it's all, it's all in good fun and games. Like, he's cool. Like, we're cool. Um, but I just really want to practice a lot and do better at the next one. I did learn. Still, I, I still learned a lot, and I feel like I was much better at handling my loss this time than I have been at previous events. Like, I felt okay with it. You know, I, I can still be proud of my play. I, I feel like my play was pretty solid feel good about it, so it's all right, you know, better luck next time type of thing, but I'm going to try really hard to just practice and get better and win next time. I think I just want to say thanks to the fans at home for cheering for me and everything. Also, like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> That's pretty much it. So you guys can follow me on twitch.tv slash az underscore axe or type in axe.pizza. That's my Twitch. My Twitter is at tempo axe. YouTube is at az axe, no underscore. I really need to centralize all this stuff. But uh, yeah, follow me if you guys are watching this. Thank you. And that's it. Cool. Cool, and we're good to go.